you know, so in this video I wanted to uh, focus on the whole concept of the Luna Park uh, inspired by our recent puppy purchase and we named her Luna and as I go through my research this Luna Park pops up seemingly all over the world so decided to take a closer look and I'd like to start with a video I found a little synopsis of the history it was in America in the late 1800s that the amusement park adopted a whole new form a technological revolution had allowed rides to be created on a scale never seen before forward I'd like to stop it there too um, we, as he says that we're shown a uh, a ferris wheel on a scale never seen before now this is 1923 let me show you something and this is just to poke a little hole in the narrative of the video I'll be walking you through so this is uh, Wikipedia right up the Ferris wheel of the Chicago World's Fair apparently repurposed for the St. Louis as well um, this thing was massive have a look at the size of this um, I'll just show you the picture if you look at each of these cars or these <laughs> pretty much houses they say that each each of these was intended to fit 40 to 60 people right and we're to believe that uh, all these uh, infrastructure this massive infrastructure was only really starting to be realized in the early 1900s so there's a little hole already in the narrative this Ferris wheel deserves its own video and that may come someday so just a uh, just a quick um, a little bit more on this Ferris wheel the wheel rotated on a 71 ton 45 foot long axle right so again we're talking about scale so a little hole in the narrative already let's go back to the video Coney Island, a seaside resort near Manhattan the rides allowed patrons to escape the moral constraints of the day in Victorian society behavior as innocent as holding hands in public was considered risque so a place to let loose right um, interesting little blurb I thought too new amusements allowed men and women not only to touch but to hug each other in public Isn't that nice? Island, one heart in New York. always looking for new ways to bring in the crowd the entrepreneurs at Coney Island introduced another new invention cinema the introduction of cinema the birth of Hollywood at the Luna Parks very interesting. In 1902, the world's first science fiction film, A Trip to the Moon, instantly caught the public's imagination. The concept of space travel also captured the imagination of two men, Frederick Thompson. All right, the concept of space travel. And let's take a closer look at this uh, trip to the moon. I found a colorized version um, of this. It's a curious story too behind this one apparently disappeared until 1993 and then it was uh, put together re uh, um, refurbished repaired for us to watch now I, I found this interesting the beginning scenes of this we're looking at a bunch of what wizard looking um, characters looking through the telescope dreaming of the moon apparently and here we have a uh, um, a globe drawing or a rough sketch and you'll see these guys I'll just go forward I'll put the link in the description you can watch the whole thing but we get to a point where they shed their wizard garb and decide to become more business oriented I thought this would be an interesting um, part of this as well it's certainly worth a watch this I remember watching a movie I think it's called Hugo uh, and it features I think Ben Kingsley, the actor, plays uh, the character who apparently uh, uh, made this movie and paint him in, of course, a romantic light of uh, a visionary of imagination. So this is interesting. So now they're in, in business mode and they're going to sell the idea of uh, going to the moon. I just fast forward a little bit here to the point where they actually land on the moon, take out the eye. That's interesting, a little one-eye symbolism there, maybe. I never thought of that. Possible. And they've landed on the moon. Um, 
I wanted to show you one more thing from this video. It's coming up shortly. Uh, this, I would say, would have been the first Im mental impression of, uh, of what the Earth may look like from the moon in space. Almost like a priming, too, of the moon landings in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, so almost like a setting of the narrative um, of the century to come. There it is right there. We see the Earth rising, similar to like, like the sun. You get the continents get Africa right there. So this would have been, at the time, a vision um, most people had never really considered before. I wonder, are they setting a new narrative? Um, have they been working on uh, resetting the uh, historical narrative for the people at the time? I mean, couple that in with all the strange anomalies going on, like the uh, lunatic asylums, um, the orphan trains, um, the normal schools, right? Normalizing a new narrative. So I found this to be an interesting little part of the uh, story. You should check this all out start to finish. There's a bunch of different versions on YouTube. I'll have put the link to this in the description. But let's get to the pictures. So we're starting with Coney Island. Um, supposedly the original Luna Park. Possibly. I just say supposedly because I don't know anything for sure. They all seem to have these shoots. And then a lot of the Luna Parks too having the similar architecture that we see old world style architecture. Um, Uh, also having a very old, very World's Fair type look, especially Coney Island. And there, the electricity to the phenomenon of Edison and electricity, I think in that short video he goes on to talk a little bit more about how this, this is where they showcased what Edison could do with the bulb and the electricity. So it ties in with the new narrative, um, some strange anomalies here. And of course the infant incubators, which pop up at all of these places or most of them. Again, in a strange phenomenon of the time. Here we have it again, baby incubators. So, uh, I mean, that lends um, to the whole theory of a reset. And what, what's really going on here at this time? I don't think we really know, and I think it's been buried as best as best it could. This is all Coney Island. We're going to move on around the world. I'll give you a list of where all these Luna Parks were located. I thought this was interesting. Galveston flood. Check out Galveston. That's a, that place was unbelievable. Something happened there. Uh, Coney Island again lit up. So let's check out that list. And a Wikipedia list of the Luna Parks. I'm not going to read anything here to you. Just want to show you how these things were spread. And in that short video again he goes on to say um, how they spread across the world because of the overwhelming success of what was going on in Coney Island, they decided that they would put these all over the world. So interesting, the unified uh, presence. No matter where you go, you see all the different countries. You'll see a couple pictures from some of the countries across the world. But interesting how we had this going on at the same time. Like uh, really trying to seed something in the memory banks of the people, maybe? I don't know. That's my musing. All right, so these are all over the place. And many of these, of course, no longer in existence. Some are. I believe this is Sydney, Australia. We'll get, get to Sydney a bit later. A little bit of Berlin for you. Dragons, interesting. Berlin again. Bird's eye view. And again. So it's definitely no, no small undertaking to build these things. Right? I, I don't, don't know if they were were actually legitimately built at the time or if there were remnants of um, a previous uh, civilization that was was in the process of being reset. I don't know. That could very well have been built for the people to uh, set the new narrative. So still Berlin. And then we'll move around a little bit here. Again, all being named the Luna Park. Something, did, something with that name too, the Luna. We'll get to that in a bit. Luna, of course, first thing you think of, lunatics. Um, lunatic asylums, right? So you have a, a nice overlap there. I would direct you actually to a video if you want to know more about the asylums at the time. This is a conversation I, I tuned in um, to earlier this week with uh, Campbell from Autodidactic, Kelly from Tartaria, Australia, 
Um, and they have some really, really powerful insight on what the asylums were. They're focusing in on Australia, but these were um, worldwide. So I'll put the link to the description on this um, video as well. Worth a look. Yeah, we've jumped to Cairo here as well, so we're getting a, getting a sense of all over the place, really, this is happening. Heliopolis, so Cairo. And not a very, uh, not not much of a variety in look, too. These seem to be uh, pretty uniform across the board. But we're looking at a lot of them having the, uh, again, the tech textile top buildings, whether it's an homage or um, to the old world buildings or whatever it is. They're there, definitely, part of the look. Here you see the bulbs up here. I think the Chicago, not 100% sure on this one. Somewhere in the States for sure. And they all had the shoots too, right? Riding the shoots reminds me of Splash Mountain, Disney. There's a bit of overlap there with Disney as well. So, the Hollywood spell with the Disney, it seems to all be working into this uh, Luna Park narrative. But definitely worth a closer look. Denver. Geneva, no? Yeah. Switzerland. Interesting look here, uh, like almost like a building built into rock, something there. That's interesting. All right, so we get to um, Luna, uh, the word Luna. Um, I looked it up, linking up with the Greek goddess Selene or Selene. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And this was an image I found. I thought it interesting, having a bit of a horned feel. Right, obviously that's a crescent moon apparently, um, but an interesting overlap there. Of, what's going on um, with these Luna Parks and what's the intention with the naming. Uh, LA here. Osaka, Japan. Interesting. That would be fun. You have a bit of an Eiffel Tower type uh, feel here. You'll see that again in Tokyo as well. Oh, here's Osaka. Here's that tower we were just looking at lit up. We jump to Paris first. So they all have their flare. Definitely, like again, lit up. Lit up with all the bulbs. They're all lit up. That was the whole point. They were trying to showcase electricity, we're told. Move us into the new um, paradigm. place to let loose for the, uh, the stiff Victorian era citizens or was there a shaping of the narrative going on it's Pittsburgh again we got the incubators with living babies love it curious suspicious for sure Seattle now. Looked into this. They had an auditorium, bathhouse there as well. Uh, none of it's there anymore. It's all been demolished, turned into a wharf or a dock. This is what it looked like. And we get to Sydney and the evolution of this suspicious phenomenon. Um, basically the face where you walk through the mouth to enter the Luna Park. And you'll see this come up and I'll tie this into a strange little a narrative of uh, what's going on these days uh, but the Sydney you need to see there's a real sinister feeling too to these faces and I'm sure that's the intention kind of scare you it's a bit of that amusement park um, fright adrenaline rush type thing that they're trying to play on um, at these places Again, Sydney. This is strange too. It's called Hell's Railway, the ghost train. I looked it up. There's a, a skeleton riding the train here. Uh, a tragedy occurred in the 70s. I think it was uh, seven or eight people uh, died in a fire. The train caught fire. Most of them were kids. A tragic story. I didn't want to harp too much on that in the video, but you can look it up if you're interested in knowing more. But strange with all the, you know, 
symbolism here. And, um, you do get some weird overlap too um, with the whole Masonic angle. And I just so happened to tune into uh, a video by Conspiracy R Us. Um, link will be in the description to this video. Definitely give this guy a sub. Um, he touches on these amusement parks in his most recent video, Repurposed. Um, and he also mentions here some of the rides have some curious names, like 33rd Degree, which is obviously a Masonic reference, and he's tying that in with the Infant Incubators. So something going on here that doesn't add up. Something more to the story. We'll take a little bit more of a look at Sydney, Australia. Had a couple of these down, down under. Uh, again, the face, right? It's just sinister with eyelashes. Look at the details in the eyelashes. I wonder if those are bulbs on there. I don't know. Light up at night, probably. Uh, we get to a little bit of Tokyo. This one looking very uh, picturesque. This one looking very much uh, like it's been there longer, for sure. From another angle, get again that old world feel. Circular windows, get the cupola. A lot of a lot of familiarity here with what we've seen around the world. And they had the tower, 75 meter high tower at night. This high tower glitters in bright illumination. Illumination, hey. Okay, we're getting to the end here. I threw this in there uh, earlier this year. There was a tragedy at I think the guy's name is Travis Scott, um, hip hop artist or something like that, where I think it was 10 people. Um, died in the crowd. Um, uh, tragedy for sure. I'm not going to get into the details. Everyone's got a different version of what they think happened there. Um, I'll, I'll leave mine for now. But I thought this was interesting because the entrance to his Astro World festival that he performed at um, looking very similar to what we see in uh, the entrance to these uh, Luna Parks. So I, I wanted to throw that in there um, just to tie it in with the modern day Here's the last image I have. Again, this is uh, Sydney. Um, again, that same feel. Like, what are you entering? You're entering through the, the mouth of what? This sort of demonic figure. I don't know. These are interesting. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, probably. Um, but uh, I found some things that definitely uh, make you go, hmm. Right. The birth of, uh, birth of cinema, Hollywood. Uh, the birth of that concept of us um, on the on the globe being looked at from afar from the moon, which was solidified by NASA later on in the century, and, and the trip to the moon and all the rest of it, which you could question till to no end. All right. So I just wanted to bring you a little perspective um, that I was sort of forming this uh, on the Luna Parks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the. The other accounts that I referenced in here, like I said, links in description. Thanks for watching.